Good evening and salutations, my GH fans. So I didn't watch the first half of, um, I guess this two-part story because mentally I just did not want to put myself through that. And I was very cautious about even watching the second episode. A couple of things that I can say for this episode. Um... What I didn't know, because I didn't watch the first part, was that Bobby was involved with trying to help people going through um, human trafficking. She had one last mission, one last girl that she was trying to save. Apparently, the, the girl was in Canada. They had to sit there, like Carly and Felicia had to sit there and drive there. And one of the things I found interesting was when they were driving, you know, Carly was like, you know, listen, I, I don't really understand why I never really hung out with you. You know, you're pretty much my mom's best friend. You know, why, why we never really hung out? And Felicia was quiet, right? And Carly, Carly kind of suspected like, okay, maybe there probably was a reason. I already knew that right off the jump. Even before they almost hit a moose or whatever, I knew what she was going to say before she even sat there and said it. She still had resentment. When Carly first came to town, she blew up Bobby's life, you know, wrecked the marriage and everything like that. And she had resentment. She had resentment. And, you know, she said she was embarrassed by it. But I'm like, that's just human. You know, does it make it right? Eh, we can sit there and kind of judge it left and right. But it was human. So, you know, it makes sense. She was her best friend. She had to sit there and watch Bobby's marriage fall apart. Two great people, two people that she loved in her life, watching their lives being ruined by this girl that came to town. So why would she really sit there and try to spend any time with her? But she did sit there and say, you know what, listen, we can move past that, seeing how when Felicia left, apparently Carly and Maxie were really close. Um, you know, they got really close and stuff like that. You know, Felicia, pretty much at that point, was the deadbeat mom. And Maxie and Carly got close. And so, you know, she was like, you know, listen, if Maxie didn't really sit there and still hold it against me, I can't sit there and hold this against you. Anyway, they find this girl in the cabin. Or they, they knock on the door and this chick comes out with a shovel. Because she didn't know what was going on. All she heard was, oh, you know, we're here to sit there and take you somewhere. And, um, you know, that was pretty much about it. But they were able to calm her down, get her the help that they need with Anna and, um, well, pretty much Robert. Because Robert still had more contacts than Anna at that point. Anna pretty much burnt a lot of bridges. More than Robert. Meanwhile, back at Kelly's, you know, everyone is sitting there talking to this reporter, sharing stories and things of that nature. Um, yeah, Scotty, Lucy, Liz. I'm not going to lie. It was it was actually kind of really hard watching Liz's story, you know. I mean, it was nice and, um, you know, seeing what Bobby really meant to her and her time and need, especially... At that point in time, when she just came from being assaulted. Towards the end of the episode, there was one part where Maxie was talking to... I, I can't even remember her name. Rihanna or something. She was like, hey, you know, listen, I want to sit there and hang out with you, spend some more time with you and stuff. And she turned around, and she was going. And right then and there, I knew... I mean, you know, granted, people told me yesterday that she was the original actress that played BJ. So right then and there, I already kind of just picked up the pieces. I'm pretty sure everyone already did. That she was, you know, um, the angel, um, BJ and everything like that. So when they tried to sit there and look for her online, they couldn't find it because, you know, she was an angel. Um, they got the help, well, they got the girl help that she needed. They 
fix the new sign. So they're going to be calling it Bobby's instead of Kelly's, which I'll actually tell you the truth makes sense. I don't even know who Kelly's was, but it's been in, you know, pretty much Bobby's restaurant for a while. So I don't really understand why he never really changed it to Bobby's, but yeah. Lucas was there for a little bit. You know, he was there in the first episode. He was trading stories in the second episode. I watched a little bit of Brock TV's review. And it, a lot of that stuff, a, a lot of the first episode really was geared more towards Carly, like, you know, exploring Carly's stuff and everything like that. Like, yeah, Lucas is there. He shared his stories. But I don't know. I wish they probably, you know, especially even in the second episode, I wish they probably would have sat there and focused some stuff on Lucas as well. I have my own issues with Carly. I mean, I like Carly, but there's a lot of times I feel like the show could be very Carly-centric. You know, like, first part it seemed like it was more about Carly and the stuff that was going on with her. The second, Carly was the one that sat there and helped Bobby complete her last mission as far as, you know, saving this girl. Lucas was there to share stories, but it's like, from what I understand, Lucas is also... Bobby's child. So, but, you know, like, like Brock said, though, you know, we don't know if it was the actor's decision to leave or how much involvement he wanted to have in the show. But it just seemed like they could, they could have shared it. You know, a lot of the stuff with, with Lucas and it didn't have to be so much about Carly. Like, not just saying that she wasn't a part of Carly's life, but, like, so is Lucas. I don't know. Um, that's actually going to sit there and do it. I was, like I said, I was very hesitant to watch this episode because I, I saw how sad it was. I did have to sit there and probably like fast forward through some of the stuff because like I was not putting myself through that. Like mentally, I was just not going to do that to myself. Um, but for the second part, you know, it was it was interesting that some of the stuff that went on. I would sit there and say, if if I had to say if I had to sit there and say anything positive about this episode, I thought it was like super negative. It was just more sad and heart wrenching than anything else. But um, that's actually going to pretty much kind of do it. I can't think of anything else. But if I miss some stuff, let me know in the comment section below. If um come to a live stream, you want to sit there and talk about it, um, we could sit there and do that as well. I did kind of like go through the first episode a little bit more, and yeah, I, 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 um, I do not have the emotional energy to sit there and do with the first one. But anyway, um, if you want to sit there and talk about it on a live stream, that's cool. I will see you in the next video or hopefully the live stream tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, and we'll talk about it later.